this one is for my bitch with the fat in the club. I said, where my fat is in the club. I have tried to record this video so many times. This is the third time. This is a video on how I personally overcame my trust issues. And I need you guys to know that my trust issues were extremely deep seated. I also am an overthinker. It used to just really control my life and a blessing and a curse to be such an overthinker. And I used to just try not to be and try not to care and just be numb and not have any emotion. But the truth of the matter is learning how to balance the overthinking is so key. So my trust issues recently I've realized were keeping me from living my best life, which if you have been following me for a while is my ultimate goal. I wanna be on my deathbed looking back at my life and be like, I'm really proud of myself because I faced all my fears. Now, when it comes to trust issues, <laughs> But um, I have had trust issues for a very long time and they're very deep seated. It stems from even my childhood and then on. And I'm now 30, I'm looking at 31. Can't wait to meet you, bitch. I am just now able to say that I'm overcoming my trust issues, which is wild. But here's some context if you care to listen. One of my parents, I'm not gonna like dive into too many details with this story, but one of my parents cheated on the other for 15 years. It wasn't just like surface level cheating, like something you can just, <laughs> there was like manipulation and gaslighting that I also dealt with as one of the kids in the household. It really affected me deeply and it caused a lot of pain. And then also seeing my other parent in a lot of pain was trifling and I hated cheating. I don't necessarily hate it because as you get older, you learn perspectives um, and you're able to give more grace, but I do not like it. <laughs> I just feel like that's normal though. Let me cover that base again. So I dealt with cheating from childhood and it really tore up the family for many years. And then every boyfriend I've ever had has cheated on me in every kind of way, um, emotional, physical, whatever. Talk, run it across your brain and I promise you I've been through it. And then I left a whole fiance, for those of you guys who don't know, and I'll get into that in just a second. But I, when I left the whole fiance, I was in the dating world for the first time in eight years and just had the purest, most innocent little expectations. And the triflingness that I experienced from men on this planet shook me to my core. At this point, last year, end of 2021, I was at the point where I'm like, I'm done. I will never let anybody in. I'm gonna be single till I die. I'm, I couldn't even fathom, not, not even like trusting them to like not cheat on me, but trusting them to be genuine and to actually be for real. And then I met my current boyfriend. Right when I cut everyone off, right when I was literally at the, the lowest pit of the everything. I was like, I'm done. I trust me and I'm good with me. Then I meet this dude. We become friends and I friend zoned him almost Im immediately because I was like, you're not going to hurt me, beloved. And even if you wanted to, like I am unhurtable. My walls were all the way up. I was so completely guarded. And then this motherfucker slipped through the cracks. Literally since the first day we've met, we were not apart for more than three days unless I was on my Italy trip or Bahamas trip. Unless I was gone, we were not apart. We, we both liked each other, I was just terrified. So yeah, more context is this is the healthiest relationship I've ever been in. And what no one talks about is how hard the healthy relationship is after the, the toxic ones. Dating scene, so let me talk So let me talk about that a little bit. Dating scene was just horrible. I was shown again and again and again and again and again. I didn't date like that. No, cause like, I consider if we went out for even like two dates, it's I dated you, right? Even though I may not have been like effing for real with all these dudes, all of them showed me how terrible. Like the worst of the worst men out here. Like that's all I saw when I was single and getting to know new guys. I was just like, and then before that, I was in an eight year relationship and he showed me his true colors, what he was really like three months into the relationship and I stayed for eight years. So the first time I ever lived on my own by myself was when I was 29 years old. Year 2021 was the first time I was ever by myself. It's amazing. <laughs> 2000 recommends. <laughs> I should have done it sooner. Anyways, so after my parents' house, I immediately hopped into this relationship and then also living with that guy for eight years. He showed me his true colors. I believed that he could change. Over the years, I was lied to. He hid so many things from me, um, manipulated. He, he played victim a lot. It was... It, there was a lot of damage over the years that I feel like I can't, I just let happen. I wish I would have left sooner. 
truly because the amount of work I have to put on myself now to fix that damage is so freaking extensive and I'm just like disappointed. I understand why I say it, I get it. I show grace for myself because I love myself and I completely understand why I have done the things that I've done. But when I did finally leave, we were four months away. We were also engaged. I think I said that, yeah. We were also engaged. We were four months away from the wedding and I found out that he was still kind of living this double life and had been lying for years. And that's when I was like, I can either continue what I'm doing right now, which is living with this. It, it was like ignorance bliss. I didn't have proof, but way deep down, I knew he wasn't being honest. I'm trying to be super vague right now. I knew he wasn't being honest, deep, deep down, but I just ignored the feeling. It wasn't a horrible relationship, it wasn't unlivable. There were still happy moments, but I wasn't happy. And even if I had never experienced an honest man, <laughs> I knew that I could treat myself better. And I did literally one of the hardest things I have ever, no, it was the hardest thing I think I've ever done. And I left. I'm so proud of myself, like I'm literally so proud of myself. It was the best decision I ever made and it was the hardest, hardest thing I ever did. So, for eight years, I think I want, let me add this, for eight years I lived with the expectation of I'm going to get cheated on, but ignorance is bliss. The reality that I always, that I lived with and just kind of adapted because it's all I really ever saw, all men want to cheat. Whether or not they do it, they still want to. All men have a wandering eye. All of them do. All men are gonna overly sexualize other women. All men lie and I will always be cheated on eventually. Yeah, I adapted by putting up all these walls and never letting anyone too close. What I didn't realize that I was doing was creating a deep-seated fear in me for years and years and years that I'm terrified of being cheated on. Really, I would not have been able to overcome that fear if I hadn't been single. Let me explain, but let me say this first. If you just wanna learn how to trust somebody, because you've gotta let go of the pain and you have to face the fear. And also, this is a hard truth and nothing but the truth, you have to do the work on your own. You can be with someone who wants to help and is like ready to kind of prove to you, maybe like, here's my DMs or here's my messages or like shares their location or whatever, whatever, whatever. But here's why that never truly helped me is because I've seen it all. <laughs> and if they wanted to, they would. If he wanted to cheat, he would. And when we first started dating, for real, when I was like, okay, let's try this, I was terrified. And there was nothing this dude could have done that I would have trusted. It was horrible, honestly. It was, it, it was shitty for me, and I'll get into that in a second. But I would not be able to face the fear of being cheated on if I had not been single. And here's why. The healing that I went through that I could have only done in that phase was learning how to love myself again. Let me dive into that. I was a people pleaser for so long always seeking other people's validation, always seeking out other people's needs before my own. And when it ended, you know, you go through this, this period where you're like, why wasn't I enough? Why am I not enough? Why am I not good enough? Truly because you're waiting to get validation from someone who doesn't actually love you the way that you ever deserves to be loved. You know, you're waiting for someone's validation who lies to you, who manipulates you, who, who gaslights you, like, you're not gonna get it. And so, here I am single and now I get to know, now I get to figure out who I am without this outside influence. I get to figure out what I love, what makes me me. And then I learned how to respect myself. So when I was single, I did what I wanted to do. I learned what I really like about myself and what I didn't like about, my, about myself, I faced head on and fixed. I love that I'm funny. I love that I can cook. I love that I clean, like I'm tidy, I'm organized. I'm ambitious and I go after my ambitions and I make it happen. I've had dreams that I've made come true. I love God. I'm smart, I'm clever, I'm witty, I love that I'm funny. I will say that 500 times, but I love that I'm funny. I love that I do whatever I set my mind to. Like, I fell in love with who I am. I fell in love with the kind of music I like, TV shows I like, I took myself on dates. It was, it was so amazing falling in love with me without someone else on the outside influencing how I should love myself or what kind or like what amounts of love I deserved or if I needed to earn it. There was no one else I needed to prove myself to, it was just me. And it was really beautiful. Then my standards rose. And I'm not kidding. Every kind of like toxic dude I attracted before that, I said attracted, didn't even come close to me anymore. Look at look at my current boyfriend. He is healthy and it's because I healed myself and it's just so beautiful so I need you to understand how important the single phase is so that when you do get in a relationship it's probably gonna be the healthy one which means it's gonna be really hard work okay but when you are in that you'll understand that even if you do get hurt you're gonna be okay every single breakup I've ever had I'm the one who glows up fam I'm the one who wins 
check my credentials. So like, if he's gonna cheat, I wish he would. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm kidding. Single face. We're gonna cross that off the list. And then I meet my current boyfriend. And all of a sudden, I'm faced with this daunting fear of, I have to trust you. No one I have ever been with before has been trustworthy. I don't even know how to start. <laughs> And what I did was for months try to tell myself those things that everyone tells you like you know You try to open up and be vulnerable with somebody and they're like the truth always comes out. So why worry about it? It's so fucking annoying. It's, you're not even like showing sympathy. You're trying to put a band-aid over a gaping wound like chill And I hated it when people would say that like yes, that's true But my reality is the truth is always gonna come out and I'm not gonna be surprised when it does because I still expected to be cheated on. So I had to face this new reality. Because I'm just sitting here waiting for the shoe to drop. I'm waiting for it to happen. I'm like, I already know it's going to. Just get it over with, please. But also, I'm truly dating my best friend. And we're so similar. Can I not believe that he's just like me with the mindset of cheating? Where he doesn't even have the desire to. Where he doesn't have a wandering eye. Like, how can I see him as every single other dude I've ever dated? Especially if I've done the healing and I'm healed. And I'm not even attracting these dudes anymore. So now I'm with a good guy. How am I still seeing him like I see everyone else? It's so unfair to him. And it's also kind of unfair to me. Because why did I leave old boy if I'm just going to act the same? If I'm going to carry on the same fear in every single future relationship? What the f*** was the point? It's honestly, 2022 was so hard for me. Because I was doing a lot of work. And for several months, I was battling a low-key form of depression. Every single day... At the end of every day, I felt so drained because I'm, I couldn't figure it out. And I'm over here like, Alicia, chill. And I couldn't, like my brain could not chill. And it wasn't until I had a conversation with my dad. And I think it was September or October. And I was just curious. But I had, was at my parents' house and he walked me to my car. He always walks me to my car and then like prays over me. It's the like, sweetest thing. I absolutely love it. And I asked him, I was like, dad, did you ever cheat on mom? And he goes, no. I wouldn't even hold any kind of resentment. I would understand. I might even be like, bravo. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But I was fully expecting a yeah. Because how could he not, you know? And he was just like, no. And I, I had opportunities. Like I had some shit that I worked with throw herself at me. And I still was just like, no. And at that moment, I realized that I was trying to trust my current boy. I'm going to call him Quincy. I'm trying to trust Quincy. Facing these demons and really thinking that I, I'm going to like choke them all out or whatever, but realizing all this trusting that I'm trying to do is never gonna happen until, until I accept my current reality, which is not every man cheats. I don't know what I would say to myself if I could go back even a year ago and just be like, not every man cheats. I think my answer would, to that would have been, yeah, but they want to. That's not true. My dad didn't even want to cheat. Quincy doesn't want to cheat. I don't want to cheat. Like I said, I can't be the only human on this planet who has no desire to cheat. It's been really unfair for me to be in such a healthy relationship and still have this toxic mindset, not even allowing myself to receive the love that I have been begging for it for my whole life. <laughs> so when I adapted this not every man is a cheater thing, I would actually like listen to stories from his childhood and figure stuff out. Like he watches, here's, here's like something for an example because it's so hard for me to like put stuff into words. He watches Too Hot to Handle. And it's just like a bunch of people in bikinis all day and like ass and titties everywhere, okay? Now, if I was with my ex, I know exactly why he's watching that show and it's not for great reasons. Um, it's for damaging reasons and it would make me feel horrible. But here is Quincy watching this show. And I'm over here like, you don't act like this, so why? You know what I mean? I'm scratching my head. Like, what, what is the reason? And so I asked him, I was like, why do you, wa why do you watch this show? And he's literally like, because of the drama. And at first I was like, and then I walked away. It takes me a while to process things, by the way. Process emotions. I sound like a, d a dumbass, but no, like, it just takes me, takes me a second. I have to, like, walk away and then be -de -de, put pieces together and then come back. I walked away and I was like, oh, dude, this dude has six sisters. Of course he, he loves the drama. <laughs> like, I was just like, oh, duh. And so now, instead of seeing him as every single man I've dated in the, in the past, I see him for who he is and it's really amazing and it just solidifies this like this is my person type of thing and it makes like I'm telling you it feels like I'm falling in love with him all over again and this time it is without the fear of being hurt which is how you should walk into every single relationship now are you going to probably not but you need to especially if you've done this healing and now you're in a healthy relationship you have got to let go of your fears but it's just a switch that happens where it's just like, I'm not going to expect to be cheated on anymore. So I'm going to be able to 
truly lean into being vulnerable. Even if the dude does cheat on me, A, the truth always comes out. I have literally found out about every single time I've ever been cheated on or lied to. Like, right in the nick of time, too. I almost got married to this dude. What? But since I've done my own self-healing, I know exactly who I am. Like I said, I always glow up after every single breakup. I know what I bring to the table. And if I do get cheated on again, I'm not gonna stay. I'm not gonna blame myself. What I used to do is just feel so embarrassed and mortified and humiliated that I allowed myself to be treated this way, literally even like fell for it. But here's the thing. I need you to understand that there is such bravery in trusting someone who is encouraging you to believe their lie. They're manipulating you. Why would you feel ashamed for being manipulated when you chose to believe the good in someone? That's so fucking brave of you. And that's a new standard that I have for myself. That's how I see myself now. I wish that everyone felt this way. Where it's just like, ew, are you kidding me? I believed you. You gotta be okay with being hurt again. Being vulnerable is not popular. Being vulnerable opens the door for opportunities to get hurt. And that's terrifying for some people. But I need you to understand, my life is riddled with a lot of pain. And I am... Okay, I don't carry it anymore. It, pain is not meant for you to carry. It's meant to teach you a lesson and you let it go and you move on stronger. But if you're carrying the pain and the fear along with you every step of your life, you are keeping yourself in a cage. You're preventing yourself from being loved the way that you deserve and loving people the way that they deserve. Because going into any kind of new relationship or just walking around your day to day, which is like, look what, of course I'm this way. Look what they did to me. Look how they treated me. Look what I've been through. Look how much power you're giving away. Bad shit has happened to you and to me, but it's up to you to let it define you. I choose to not let it define me. It's terrifying to be vulnerable because there's a lot of opportunity for you to get hurt, but it also opens the door for opportunities to feel pure joy, to be loved unconditionally, to free fall into the life that you deserve. You can't fully love somebody and you can't fully let yourself be loved if you are terrified to let someone in. And I want to encourage you this year in 2023 to face your fears. Learn to let go of the things that you can't control. Forgive yourself for any kind of shame that you carry. I gotta say this, being in toxic situations makes you adapt by creating toxic responses because it's like the only way you can survive. So if you've done some things where you're just like mortified to think about, Forgive yourself for that and understand you, your brain literally did what it needed to do. Okay, I also learned this the other day. Your brain doesn't understand the English language. <laughs> Shocker, I know. The language that the brain speaks is behavior. In this day and age, you know, there's a lot of people who have social anxiety. And so people are like, well, just stay home. If you don't feel comfortable, don't do it. That is actually the wrong thing to do because your brain recognizes behavior. So if there is something that scares you, you should go do it. Which is like amazing to have that confirmation because that's how I've always lived my life is facing my fears. So if there is something that you're afraid of, you need to go do it. To A, show your brain that it's not that bad and then do it again and again and again to show your brain that this is the habit, this is the new normal. And that's how people have been able to overcome their anxiety. When I say, if you want to practice trusting someone again, it is the work that you have to do alone. Because say I'm like, okay, Quincy, I'll trust you, but you gotta share your location. That's me learning how to trust with an exception. It's not fully trusting someone. I trust you, but I gotta see it to believe it. <laughs> now, should the person that you are with, like if you're like, hey, let me see your DMs. If they're like, <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, fam, that's a red flag. Let's be, let's be for real. It is trusting someone if and only if you have leverage. You will not ever be able to trust somebody unless you can trust them blindly. I think I rambled and ranted long enough. I'm gonna get off this camera. Hope that this helps. I really love my life and where I am now. And I'm so excited for 2023 because I'm in this healthy relationship that I can finally sit back and enjoy without the fear of being hurt. And I want everybody to feel this way. Do the work because you deserve it. And if you are with a healthy person, they deserve it and you know it. And um, I love you guys so much. I really truly hope this was helpful. I'm so surprised I did not cry. What the f I cried in the other two videos. <laughs> Third time's the charm. <laughs> okay, bye. Mwah. Love you.